All right, so you have to understand that there's so much to to read into when it comes to language because people look at language and they just automatically think that it's supposed to be. Okay, so what's my example? Programmed cell death, apoptosis, apoptosis. And actually I learned that from a Natalie a long time ago, a couple years ago when I was writing my response to the OAG. And we were talking about apoptosis, which is a programmed cell death. We were learning about autophagy, autophagy, and yeah, the J-juice, not only did it encourage autophagy, autophagy, but also someone who had cells that needed to be programmed, need to, to be encouraged to die because they were antibiotic. And so there's programmed cell deaths, but what kind of cells are being programmed to die? That's the issue here. And so when something is programmed, well, who's programming it and why? And so these are the questions you have to ask. See, we take definitions for face value, but that's what definitions are. They're just definitions. Why and how then has to become another question. So when you have a definition of apoptosis, which is a programmed cell death, who is programming that cell and why is it programming that? And so when I ask the questions, why do cell die? Why do cells die? Who programs them? Then I'm like, well, genetic manipulation accelerates the cell death faster than an individual can adapt and evolve to changes due to evolution and adaptation. So you can actually survive programmed cell deaths if you are able to take on more substance that is beneficial to you than is programmed to die. And then what cells are being programmed to die? It could be your vital organs but people don't realize what is programmed in their body because they were never made aware of what kind of therapies that are out there, all the different types of therapies that are out there. And there are millions of types of them. There's oncology therapies. People are doing their uh, remedies and, and stuff in the antibiotics world. And then they're doing oncology therapies that are actually targeting specific organs based upon what kind of cancer they have. So if they have cervical cancer, they have you know brain cancer, they have heart cancer or whatever, uh, vital organ cancers or even parts of the body, then there's therapies that are tailored to that type of cancer and that part of the body. And then an antibody, which is a programmed cell death, then is developed by that person because they develop a resistance against it, they develop antibodies against it, and then that's in the population. Okay? And so there's, and so, you know, programmed cell death is just it's just a definition, but you have to ask who is programming these cells to die and why. And so that's why you have to release all of those types of uh, reversed, well, I won't say reversed, but you have to release that programming that is programming your body to self-destruct because people are not aware of that when they go outside. And you know, even though they don't take the therapies, they go outside and breathe in somebody's programmed cell death. And so then that... Um, incubates inside of them and if they have a crappy release process and a crappy filtration process and they're doing too many detoxes and antibiotics in the holistic system then they still keep the programming within them they think oh yeah I released a bunch of programming but not necessarily because your body is still starving and when your body is still starving and you're doing the fasting and you're dieting and you're taking more antibiotics and compounding the issue then those things that have been freaking Oh, mosquitoes. Those things that have been programmed to uh, a pepticide or a programmed cell death would then still convert other proteins, other antibiotic proteins, or the antibiotics that you're taking that are laced with foods and different elements, then they also will, you'll develop antibodies against the food supply and antibodies against your elements in, the, in your environment. And that's why there's so many allergies. That's why there's so many uh, plant allergies, food allergies, um, chemical allergies because of all the antibiotics that are used against your body's ability to evolve because you don't want to feel pain. You don't want to feel anything. And that's why the medical holistic system has has developed such, um, such cancers and diseases because of the antibiotics. And so, so then, you know, I am writing, I'm, I'm now attempting, I wrote about DNA and RNA because I'm taking now all of my information and I'm like deleting the stuff that's just drivel and I'm getting to the real meat of it and it means that I'm taking 
you know, I, I've taken all the little parts that are all over the place that was in my folders and I copy and paste them, put them in some kind of whatever mishmash order, and then I have to go and take it and dissect that and then number them based upon how I want the flow to go within the actual chapter. And then I then add on more chapters on top of that to then show you a logical sequence. And so I'll just give you a tiny little snapshot. And so I went from, well, let's just start from We Are the Universe. Actually, the order of the Georgia Guidestones, which talks about the Georgia Guidestones and the whole depopulation, but more of like a population control type of thing. And then there's actual, there's, there's 26 pages of We Are the Universe, of everything that we've kind of gone over as far as the universe and, and, and what did I say about this? <laughs> that, well... I don't have it all memorized, but yeah, the universe and you are breathing, um, macro level, micro level, and I have some pictures, I'm gonna, and also stuff that I have to go in, a subatomic level, and protons, neutrons, so I'm giving you a real, like, synopsis, but a short synopsis of <coughs> planets and, and all the different uh, astrophysics types of stuff that you will then translate so every not everything in the universe but a lot of things in the universe and a lot of the the physics and the chemistry and all of that and then it goes into intelligent mitochondrial dna which is the viruses and then from that i go into scripting viral language programming which is all of the the, the language and the math and even the script for humanity how we're using allegory to program people to be in an archetype okay and then it goes into dna and rna which then goes into the T cell and B cells because DNA and RNA have a specific programming and they have codons and scripts and, and it has sugars and elements and other stuff that make up the DNA and RNA and then it has a projected image and it's all programmed, everything's programmed. And then it goes from the DNA and RNA to then the T cells and B cells and the regulators and that's when I'm gonna have to say that yes, everything is programmed and even you're programmed to die. Your body is being programmed to pass away through all the different therapies in the therapies market. And if you're not even doing the therapies out there, but you have a shitty relief system and your alimentary canal is closed, then you're breathing in other people's therapies. So even by virtue of indirect or uh, just by association, if you don't react to your friends and family who are in the mainstream or even the alternative mainstream, if you're not reacting to their programming, then you're taking it on, you're assimilating to it. So you have to make sure that you open up your system and that when you wake up in the morning, you're always full of mucus because you're in a world that has so much of the amniotic programming that you know you have to release that or it's incubating inside, causing that programmed cell death. Okay? And so then after that T cell, B cell chapter, then it's the objective of the Jilly Juice journey, which will go into more stuff. And then the Jilly Juice protocol and... And, and then you'll see now where everything from Silicon Valley secrets to setting a president to cancel culture, cutting through the layers, my own little stuff. Oh no, it's the Illuminati, the ranch of the Rosicrucian, alchemist, allegory, and archetypes, the order of the Georgia Guidestones, we are the universe, intelligent mitochondri mitochondrial DNA, script viral language programming, DNA and RNA, T cell, B cell, the objective. So that way you know how you've been programmed to die. Now you can reverse that programming. What's what was the point of me putting now the DNA and RNA and T cell and B cell at the bottom versus the top? Because that's telling you how you've been programmed to die through the Rosicrucian order, and now you have a chance to reverse that. But the, the, this is what you have to go through, and it's not going to be easy. Not everyone's going to survive it because it's just too much. And so that is going to be the logical sequence. I finally put everything that I've written about and pulled it out from all the drivel shit that I was writing about, you know, the Greek pantheon and all the different gods, demigods, got rid of all of that, got rid of the whole Sumerian thing and all the hominid stuff, and which is good to know, and all the historical wars and all that stuff that I was getting caught up in the rabbit holes of history and science and, and how, you know, earth was made and all the religions, okay? And I really just narrowed everything down to the specific storyline that I am trying to impart, that this is what you're programmed with, how you were programmed, and how you can change the programming, cut and dry. And it really is a, th a trifecta. It's 
you know, what you can relate to as far as <laughs> you can go to California, go to Silicon Valley, you can go to the Rosicrucian Museum in San Jose and see what they do. Okay. And so it's not something that you can't, hey, hey Andrian, it's something that you can't relate to. And Andrian Ram, get off the, the spicy, spicy food. That's probably why you still have hemorrhoids. No more spicy food. Okay. <laughs> That's my advice to you. If you want to see some kind of relief in your, in your hemorrhoids is get away from spicy stuff. And never do spicy again except after you've done all the reversal of everything. And then you can do a little bit of spicy every so often, but not too much. Not right now while you're going through this process. So anyway, so now I am now putting in a nice logical sequence so you can relate to everything that you see today. And you can then say, okay, what I'm looking at today happened in history. That you add color to black and white photos, you're looking at people that, are, that, that you see today but in a different costume. And so you have some relationship to history, and history is, it has some relationship to the present, and you can change it. Okay? And so I want you to see exactly the logical order, and then you see how I'm, I'm, how I'm doing this. And then you know there, it is possible for you to reverse that programming from a, a programmed cell death to now a potential immortality. And yeah, germline cells, somatic cells. <laughs> you know, if you go, I, it'll be in the book, Andrian. But let me get, do this. The the, the 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 somatic cells are what happens after the body reproduces a baby, okay? And germline cells are the parent cells. And so, when you think about Silicon Valley, they're like the parent cells that develop the programming, all the engineering. I'll tell you a little bit, Andrian. I came from there, okay? But Stanford University, UC Berkeley. Uh, UC San Francisco, San Francisco State, um, UCLA, USC, all the different universities of California are all about engineering, um, experimentation, San Jose State, Santa Clara University. All these universities are all about uh, these. Yeah, I got bit by a mosquito. All these universities are about human experimentation. Okay, human experimentation and then programming people to act a certain way, to be a certain way, programming religions and cults. And, and you saw what happened in the 1960s and 70s, came out of San Francisco, came out of, the, you know, you, out of Berkeley. And then you had the Haight-Ashbury, you had all the different cults and religions, you had Charles Manson, the serial killers. And so we programmed a very antibiotic society through all the different drugs in the 1960s and 70s. But even before that, the 1940s and 50s, um, uh, were the starting of all the, the real experimentation, but even before that was the 1940s during World War II and what happened in the Holocaust, okay? They did so much experimentation on people, torturing them, and that's what was the major thing about the Holocaust was that there was experiments that were really, 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 really brutal. And and so, but it, that wasn't the end. The, the, the World War II wasn't the end. We took all the scientists that were doing that over there and brought them here to America, and then they run all the different biotechnical companies. But instead of doing what they did back in World War II, now it's more of a biological, but now you have a choice. Now there's a Freedom of Information Act. Now you are saying, okay, I'm willing to go through the human experimentation by, by taking the, the, the therapies, regardless of what, said, what it said like on the inserts. And so now people are advocating their own uh, program cell death. That's exactly what all the therapies are, regardless of what they are. All the supplements, all the detoxes, all the different cults and the cult leaders that are advocating love, 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 and, and all this other stuff, hate, 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 and, and everything else, and all the religions and the politics and the scientific dogmas are all about programmed cell deaths. And it's all done through allegory and characters. And people take on the characters, personas, and then you see it all in your society. And so, yeah, and you know that spicy food Especially in some cultures, it's so spicy that you see what happens to people in some cultures. And of course, in India, they have the caste system, okay? So let's bring it to a culture like India, where they have all the curries, and they have all the, 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 um, the really spicy food stuff, right? And then what would offset that would be the milk from the cows that they worship. Okay, good. But if you are in a lower caste, you're not eating as much... Well, you're not eating any cows, 
maybe you're drinking some milk, but there's a lot of spices, and so there's a lot of emaciation in the lower caste because of lack of access to food and the spicy food that is taking away the substance and causing a war inside. Okay? So, so anyway, so Silicon Valley is where all the Rosicrucians finally gathered, and that's where the tech industry and biotech and the engineering and the experimentation and the MK Ultra, and that's then where all the civil rights stuff came through, the LGBT rights, the whole diversity stuff. And so then you see how, how revolutions get engineered. But it's an organized process, no different than your body being programmed for an organized cell death. Okay? And so you're going to see now with my whole book, it's going to go all the way from my background, which, yeah, I was programmed by two scientists. Okay? One was behavioral and one was chemical. That was a perfect storm. I, 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 I couldn't be any more in the mix than what I was raised with in that town, in that culture. Okay? And so I'm the perfect person to talk about it. MK Ultra, I wouldn't say I was like Shirley Temple. You heard about Shirley Temple, right? You heard about uh, Kathy O'Brien. I wasn't like that. Believe me, if I wish I was, not really. But uh, the whole, you know, Bob Hope and Thanks for the Memories, Kathy O'Brien, I wasn't to that extent and I wasn't like Shirley Temple. Okay? But we definitely had our own programming and everyone was programmed in some way in Silicon Valley. And then, of course, it translates into all the other states and all the different universities that are reinforcing that. Ohio State and, you know, uh, what is it, Harvard and, and, and Yale. And then you have Oxford over there in England. You know, all these universities are all about experimentation, human experimentation. Not a horrible thing because we're trying to get a type of perfect um, infrastructure or perfect innovative human with a perfect innovative infrastructure and which human is going to be the one that's going to stand out above the rest and adapt to all these changes and be the strongest prototype, which was the whole point of the eugenics. People don't like the term eugenics, but that's what it is or else you're going to get such uh, lower forms that don't evolve, that are always in conflict, violent, you know, under the influence and causing chaos in society. You know, when you have that kind of stuff going on, how can you advance as a society if you have to always keep babysitting those that don't know how to control themselves and their proclivities? And so there's got to be an advancement. But it means it takes an advanced person who's able to evolve and deal with the evolution versus a person who's always wants to be under the influence and not evolve and then be angry at everybody and blame everyone for everything that that ever happened. And so there's a upside to it, but you have to understand what it takes and it's not easy. And these freaking mosquitoes are pissing me off. Okay, I'm gonna go, but that's exactly the the, the train I'm going on and the train has left the station. Thanks guys, appreciate it, bye.